Get right into it, Stephen. This is a Travis Bean that uh, a lot of your fans have seen you use for years and years, so tell us about it. Um, well, I've been using Travis Bean for about 20, 20 years or so, maybe a little more. This, this particular instrument is a, uh, one of the new Travis Beans that mm -hmm. Kevin Burkett started doing with Mrs. Bean. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, the new Travis Bean designs, but he asked me to do a signature, which is kind of insane yeah. to do, so I did a silver burst. Um, I've been playing this for a few years. I think this came out in 18, 2018. What were some of the things you asked Kevin to do, and is it maybe based off of like a, T, like a 500 or a 1000 model, like 1001 Yeah, a? It's the, yeah it is exactly. It's the, okay. uh, it's the A, it's the 1000 A reissue. Okay. Well, it's not a reissue, it's just the remake i guess well the thing is though kevin's machining is so beyond what they were capable of in the 70s mm. so precise i imagine yeah the precision is is more tangibly accurate and i don't know how to really put it otherwise but playing i have several old travis beans too which i love very different characters but this one is um there's something right here that it just feels more accurate here, this little dip in mm. inside here. But it still has brass nut, which is something some of the beans had back yeah. then, but not all. Um, and we we coiled the um, the pickups are hang, you know, they're coiled by Kevin in his shop, um, you know, according to this old bean specs gotcha. and, and stuff too. And I know that Kevin does metal body guitars, like Buzz has the signature metal guitar. Is this a wood body or a metal body? This is Koa. Oh, okay, so it yeah. is. A, just so, like the old ones. Yeah, and they they made um, several with pine back then too, but um, some of the Koa ones they made back then, also the artists, they did paint. It's kind of stupid to paint Koa now because <laughs> yeah. it's so rare, but in the 70s, I guess it was kind of a surplus um, furniture wood um, uh, alternative to mahogany. Mm -hmm. So it was used a little bit more, you know, just as a product. Now, now it's pretty expensive actually to get a slab even this size size but we decided to do it through the silver burst anyway uh, one of my first real actual guitars was a silver burst um les paul so okay. i've always had a um place in my heart for that it, something about that striking <laughs> about those like cosmetically the les paul i know les paul is like a classic traditional shape but when you throw a silver burst on it and then yeah. they start to fade and get that green look to yeah. it, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, It's very definitely. unique to that type of coloring and layout. But yeah. This There's all those myths about the Les Paul silver burst too, that the, that the, um, the paint had a, um, the substrate in the paint was denser or something mm. and dulled the sound down. I don't know if that's true. I mean, Les Paul is always kind of dull to me yeah. in a way compared to Travis Bean, mm -hmm. of course, but any guitar would be, I guess. But, yeah, right. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, we were specific about the radius too, but, um, and the uh, fretboard material, but, um, you know, it's not, it's an artist anyway, which is a, is the custom Travis Bean, but mm -hmm. it's more of the, um, accomplishment of having a interaction actually with them, yeah. you know, so, um, yeah, yeah, so I've, I've been playing this one, um, with Son for a couple of years. Awesome. But I also have some of Kevin's other guitars, the Electrical Guitar Company stuff, which are, are pretty nice. Yeah. And what should we know about uh, strings and tuning that you're using on this? Um, we tune to a drop A. Kind of, it's basically a, a, baritone? a baritone, but it's not a baritone length neck. So um, I think in this, I have a 70 on the bottom. All right. And then basically a heavy jazz set, so 56 oh, okay. on the E. and Yeah.